CLL and SLL really is a disease of older individuals. The average age of patients with CLL is 72 years. So almost by definition, CLL is a disease of the elderly. And as people get older, it's very common that they develop comorbidities, major organ dysfunction, that can impact their ability to tolerate therapy. So knowing their comorbidities is important in terms of determining what therapies they can reasonably tolerate. In addition, one has to look at the drugs that you are considering for a patient to determine if they have any unique toxicities that an older patient may be less able to tolerate. And lastly, the issue of frailty needs to be examined that. One 70-year-old patient is not the same as another 70-year-old patient, um, and their ability to tolerate treatments can be different based on frailty. This is a very exciting time in the world of lymphoproliferative disorders in general, including CLL, because there are a variety of new targeted agents that are coming out uh, in various phases of development. Uh, there are several new drugs out there, including obinutuzumab, uh, venetoclax, idelalisib, and abrutinib that all have some FDA label indications, but there is additional clinical trials that are ongoing to look at how we can use these agents best either alone or in, as part of combination therapy in a wide variety of lymphoproliferative disorders. Some of these drugs are approved for first-line therapy. Some are approved for patients who have relapsed or refractory disease. Interestingly, when one speaks about older patients, there have been trials done in the last year or two with several of the newer agents that actually targets an older patient population. The fact that the patients are older just emphasizes the fact that we need some form of formal assessment of their, not only of their comorbidities and their performance status, but also of their frailty or their fitness. And that brings up the issue of performing some sort of assessment that could either be the compre comprehensive geriatric assessment or something similar to that to try to determine if you have a fit older patient, an unfit older patient, or somebody who's just in between. So it isn't as simple as just prescribing a therapeutic regimen for a patient. It's really a matter of evaluating the older patient, not only in terms of their ECOC performance status, but also in terms of their comorbidities, their major organ dysfunction, whether that be cardiac, pulmonary, renal, or hepatic. And then lastly, really looking at their uh, activities of daily living, their functioning, uh, how frail are they or aren't they? And that helps you to make the decisions on what is a good treatment regimen for a given patient. For many years, for many decades, the majority of clinical trials in CLL did not involve an older patient population. If one goes back to some of the seminal studies, uh, treatment studies on CLL that were done out of MD Anderson Cancer Center, in some of the FCR studies, the average age of the patient was in the upper 50s to early 60s, which is a lot different than the real world population. And as I mentioned, looking at the trials of some of the newer agents, fortunately, these trials are actually enrolling more of, of an older patient population, as well as patients with comorbidities.